Hi guys, welcome to another short video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. In uh, today's video you're going to see um, little snippets and clips of um, a day out where I drove around the villages and went walking and just basically tried to get a shop. Now many of you have given me advice now since you found out that I was looking to get a shop. Now I tried to get one in Abacana and I was going to go for the old library and they wanted just too much money, they wouldn't deal, they wouldn't come down for Abacana and it was shockingly expensive. Um, then I went for one in Mountain Ash, uh, quite a large shop in Mountain Ash which was very cheap with no council rates and the estate agent said to me yeah you can have it no problem at all but then the, uh, the girl who was in the shop actually recommended somebody to the landlady um, to take her place, so rather than going through the estate agents, they done it privately. So I lost out on that shop. I then went to Aberdeer Town Centre and looked at some massive shops and thought, you know what, maybe I should just jump in the deep end and make an antique centre and an antique shop in one go at the, at the start. Done my calculations now, and I was looking between ten and 15,000 start-up costs, which was alright, it was doable. It was expensive, but it was doable. But what was worrying me was it was 500 a week of charges, costs that I could see. Just between rent, rates, electric, gas, insurance, water and so on. We were up £500. Then the cost of the um, stock that I'm selling to make that £500. So, and that's without hidden costs. So the first 1000 or to £1,200 a week, to be honest with you, was gone. It was swallowed up by the shop and that was just crazy money. For a little antique centre, I was going to put probably between 20 and 50 cabinets in there. Um, and the cabinets are two to three hundred pound a unit. Um, 20 to 50 cabinets are 20 pound a week. I may have had a thousand pound back, but then I still wasn't making no money. So I wanted to do it, but the risks everybody was coming across saying, you know, don't do it, antique centres are folding all over the place and everything. It's always been my dream and always will be my ambition to have a big, big antique centre. And I will achieve it. But I didn't have the type of money behind me I felt that I needed in, for let's say, for two years start-up then. So if it was slow filling the cabinets, then I could cover the rents and the bills and everything out my own pocket until I got up and running. By the time I paid out the 15 grand start-up costs, it just wasn't realistic at this time. So what I've done, um, I went uh, back looking, I'd done about four or five days of looking, but only one day of filming, just to give you an idea how hard it was. And I can show you every single day was as hard as the one you see. But eventually, um, I went into a little estate agent in Mountain Ash and said, can you put me on your list for any commercial properties? I said, I'm looking for something cheap just to start up. And he turns around to me and says, I've got nothing on my list, i got an upstairs office, uh, first floor office and I said to him oh, I want to be on ground floor I want a shop front and the gentleman was very nice turned around to me and said well I tell you what have my estate agents and I'll move it upstairs so he's given me his estate agents building and he's moving upstairs with his estate agents to the first floor it's a very small shop um, there's no room for me to rent cabinets out I'm gonna get a nice little antique shop in there um, but it is going to be a very small starter, but the price is right, guys. It is so cheap, it's unbelievable. There's no council tax to pay on it because it's uh, rateable value is less than 6000 So, <clears throat> just a little bit of rent and utilities, and the utilities are minor. So I'm really pleased. It's only a startup shop, um, and well, to be honest, if I make money, I may keep it on in the long term anyway, um, and expand through because he owns the entire block. So we'll see how it goes. I'm going to do more a little jewellery shop and a little antique shop as opposed to a big antique centre now for the moment. There isn't nothing in the area. The shop I've, uh, I've got, I signed for it yesterday. And the shop I've got is in Mountain Ash Town Centre. And it's a little shop that used to be the estate agents right on the corner. Now I'm going to do films um, on the shop and the progress and so forth. I'm not going to show you the shop in this film. I'm going to show you the struggles of looking for a shop in this film, but I'll do an, another film now. I don't get the keys until Monday, 
I signed for it yesterday, I get the keys on Monday, I've, and we've ordered cabinets, we've ordered signs, we've ordered everything. And I'll make little films showing you everything we've bought, how we're putting it all together, and then we'll show you the finished article when we put all the stock in. So hopefully you'll enjoy seeing all that, guys. And at the worst case scenario, for the price I'm paying, it doesn't matter if it's just storage. It really doesn't, and if I use it just to bring in jewellery over the counter and sell online. It really has come in that cheap, guys. So I'm really pleased. Um, thank you very much for everybody who gave me advice. I have taken every single bit of it on board, and that is, to be honest with you, the reason I didn't go for the big antique centre at the start. If I'd had 100,000 behind me, or a quarter million behind me, if I'd done the crowdfunding, then maybe I would have started. But at the moment, with the funds I got behind me, I didn't want to risk every single bit of silver and gold I had, and then run out of money. So, for now, it's uh, a small little antique shop, guys. And my first one. It's my first little shop. It's going to be very small, but very little pretty. It'll be a pretty little shop with little jewellery, silver pieces, gold, a couple of nice bits of porcelain. Um, and we'll just see how it goes. But you are going to get to see it, guys. And you'll have regular updates or vlogs on how the shop is doing. And do I feel it's worth you doing a little shop now? I know everybody says these antique shops are closing down. No, I have just found a shop in the town centre with no rates, um, very low um, utilities and very low rent. It's a small shop, but maybe there's other eBayers out there who are struggling who might go down the same line because I, genuinely I was paying about £800 a month to eBay because I was taking between one and 2000 a week. Um, and I was losing a lot of money of that to eBay. I'm paying next to nothing um, for a shop. Eight, eight to twelve hundred pound a month, sorry, on my eBay fees. But I was taking between one and two thousand a week. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, uh, it's side cheaper. I can still sell online, guys. And I'm expecting a lot of people to bring stuff in to me. But what I'm expecting to sell in the shop, it'll be the Royal Dalton figurines, the Wedgwood ladies, um, you know, the little pottery animals, crystal decanters. How many times have I said to you, I go out, I see crystal decanters everywhere. If they're signed, I sell them online. If they're not signed, I leave them there, even though they might be the best decanter in the world, because they can't get that message across to them online. Well, now I am going to leave them there. I can buy them, put them in a shop. So I'm really, really hopeful. Sandra's obviously going to help me uh, by spending a few days a week down there. So, yeah, really, really excited. It's a new venture. We've expanded out now to include a very small shop. <clears throat> but it's a shop, guys, nonetheless. I'm very proud of it. Well, I will be once it's done. <laughs> and obviously, you'll all get to see it. It's a long way from my antique centre, but you know what? I don't even care. It's a start. It's where you start and not where you finish. And I'm really, really excited. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, what you're going to see now is footage of a full day of me out and about. Um, so, yeah, I'll splice all that in now. There's going to be a few little pieces without sound where I'm going to cut out names, uh, people's names now, because I've even recorded a couple of conversations on the camera. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to take out names and things. Um, so you can hear talking, the talking and the conversation, but you, you don't get to know who I'm talking to and things like that. I'm going to mute that off. But all in all, I hope you enjoy the video, guys, and show you just how hard I've worked for the last week to two weeks looking for a shop. I literally have been out every single day looking for a shop. Every time I've gone shopping, I've looked for shops. I've gone in every estate agent. I've, I've scoured the internet for I don't know how many hours. It was hard, but I found one, and I found one within walking distance of my home. No commuting. It's just perfect, guys. I just wish it was slightly bigger, but it's perfect. I'll see you soon. Good morning, guys. Welcome to another video by Antiques Arena. My name's Walter O'Neill, and today we're having an out and about adventure. <laughs> it's five o'clock in the morning, so it's a very, very early start. Um, just to give you an idea, you can see how dark it is to my side here. As you can see, I'm gone. <laughs> so, 
and why am I up so early? Obviously going to car boot sale in Cardiff buy-in. I'm going to Splot Road in Cardiff. And then we're off out and I'm going looking for a shop. Now I don't mean a shop as in I'm going looking for an antique centre to go browsing around and things like that. I'm going looking for a shop for myself. I've been on the phone to a few estate agents in the last couple of days. Um, I want an antique centre um, of my own, of course, and I'm working towards that. However, I've decided for the next six to 12 months, I'm gonna take on a lease on a shop. Um, I've got a lot of jewellery, I've got a lot of antiques, so I'm going to make an antique slash jewellery shop Certainly for the next six months, see how it goes And go from there So today we go in looking. I actually don't mind where my shop is All I need is a city centre or a town centre I am on a budget You know, I my uh, budget isn't endless I found a couple of really good shops yesterday for between one and two hundred pound a week in Newport City Centre. Now I have requested a viewing and I've requested a viewing on a shop in Pont de Prix. Um, for those of you who live overseas and that these names now won't mean much to you. But Newport is a large city in Wales and Pont de Prix is a large town. So you're talking lots of people and you, with main high streets full of shops, retail outlets. So my hope is to get into one of these, set up, so yeah, I'll have Sandra and Sandra's sisters helping run the business, uh, you know, they'll attend the shop while I'm out buying, things like that. And of course Sandra will be there. You know, she's been doing the antiques with me now for nine years, so she'll uh, she'll be working in the uh, antique centre, and I can be out doing what I want to do, which is buying. So it's quite an exciting day to be totally honest with you. I haven't really slept much. I got lots of things going round and round in my head. It'll be the first time I've ever owned an antique shop. Granted, it's a step down from what I've always dreamed of, which was having a massive centre. However, if uh, I buy a big enough shop, then I can always start that by putting cabinets along the back wall, renting them out, and taking it from there, step by step. This will be the first rung of a ladder now for me, or the first process in uh, a line of to do things to do. I'm. Uh, I'm actually quite happy and excited to be going out looking for shops today. Now, to take a shop, you can actually have what's known over here as pop-up shops. Where you, you know, there's companies that find empty buildings and you can just all of a sudden, you know, you pay them the rent and you have what's called a pop-up shop. They do them over here for fireworks and Christmas uh, decorations and things like that. But I'm not interested in a pop-up shop. I'll take a lease of six or twelve months um, and go from there. I'm pretty confident, even though there's a lot of antique shops shutting down, I'm pretty confident I can make it work for a number of reasons. One, I buy my products so cheap that I can afford to move them on cheaper. I don't have to hold out for top dollar. I'll happily source daily and Put lower prices on it to get the sales and I'm pretty confident I got enough trade dealers who will come to me at location and buy so it's no different to you know going to my market stalls and that for me to work splot in Cardiff um, or even Malvern if I wanted to go to Malvern and work you're talking nearly a hundred pound for one day's work by the time you pay for my fuel my pitch my pitch, I mean my stall, my stand, whatever you want to call it. Um, a little bit of food and some teas. You have a hundred pounds for the day. 
well, I can hire a shop for between one and two hundred pound a week and be open seven days a week if I want to. It won't interfere with my buy-in because as I've said, it'll be my shop. If I want to open at 10 in the morning after going to the car boot sale buy-in, that's what I'll do. My opening hours can be 10 till 6, 10 till 5. It doesn't make any difference. It'll be my choice. So, definitely very excited this morning to be going down to Splot and then I'm going to go driving around. Ideally, I would have liked somewhere local to myself, even if it was um, you know, a small town like Aberdeen. However, astronomically and crazy as it sounds, the rent for a shop in Aberdeen is around 12 to 1500 pounds a month. Yet I can go to Newport City Centre for five to 600 pounds a month. I don't know where the sense is. Um, obviously it must be the estate agents following the stuff, but um, it makes no sense to me how you can have cheaper rent in a city with hundreds of thousands of people that live there in comparison to somewhere like Aberdeen where probably 30 to 50,000 people live there. There's some um, nice premises in Aberdeen and there really are some large places I could instantly run an antique centre there but you're talking one hell of a gamble at £2,000 a month. Um, I need six months to get an antique centre up and running. So if I was to rent one of the buildings in Aberdeen, you're talking yeah, six months, two grand a month, you're talking 12 grand just laid down on a gamble um, that I can get it paying off within that six month period. Which doesn't really sound a lot. 12,000 pound gamble, no, it doesn't. But I'd much rather be, um, you know, starting off with a lower rent or even purchase. If I purchase a place, then it doesn't matter because I'm not paying no massive, massive bills. £2,000 a month would be a lot of money. Plus then you've got your council rates, which is your poll tax, your council tax, whatever you want to call it. And the council over here, you're talking for a store that size, 27000 a year, something like that. It was crazy money. So, it'll be a little shop for, a, for the next 12 months and then we'll build up from there. But the one thing I won't do is overfill it so people can't get in and see the, the wood for the trees. It'll be a very well presented shop and the entire thing will be done on film for you. You'll see the layout, you'll see regular films on what I'm selling through the shop. So, yeah, just hope I can find the right shop at the right place and the right price. You gotta take, gotta go for it sometimes in life, guys. But this obviously is the next step in my life. I'm really, really excited. <laughs> to be honest with you, if nothing else, just to have my house back. Because my house is full of stock that is really nice now as you know I take all the lower end to the car boot sales then I have stuff for the internet I even have a level above that that I won't sell because I haven't been able to achieve the prices I want or because I love it so it'd be nice to have a display in the shop priced up I can have some really nice pieces at the back then my work good work in stock and to be honest with you, I doubt I'll even put out my uh, cheap end unless I have a small table in, in the corner somewhere with low-end um, collectibles that would normally go to a car boot sale. But just because I'm uh, thinking of opening a shop doesn't mean I'll stop doing the car boot sales. If anything, my buy-in has to increase to sustain the shop and you know anything else I sell on. But it's exciting times. As you can see, Sandra's not with me today. She's off to Slimming World, but I can guarantee you she is crying. So a big shout out to you, Sandy. Good morning. <laughs> uh, she wanted to come today just to have a look around some shops, see so she could have a little uh, opinion on the shops I chose. 
Unfortunately, Slimming World uh, is a huge commitment for Sandra. She's trying to change her life around. Um, so I'm on my own. But excited is an understatement. Um, I'll keep you posted throughout the day. As I go into estate agents and things and they give me little leaflets, I'm going to show you the, uh, the articles at the shops and the prices sizes um, I'll probably you know if I find the shop I'll show you the location show you the shop talk, talk a little bit about the flaws or positives or negatives and so you'll be a part of the process with me guys I am waiting on a call back for one very good shop Newport City Centre in the main high street hundred pound a week and it's even got the roller steel shutter on the front to protect the shop so I'm really hoping I get a call back on that one. Um, if I do, I'll be down there this morning looking at it. So fingers crossed on that, but it all depends on um, deposits and estate agent fees and all the rest of it as well, because they ain't gonna be cheap. So we'll see how it goes. Either way, it's gonna be an interesting day, guys. So, not to mention, on top of all that, I get you'll get to see all the actual stock that I buy today. Um, I had a massive haul yesterday. I haven't filmed it yet. And I mean, it was massive. Everything from dinky cars, um, antique glassware, ceramics, I know I said I weren't buying ceramics, I had some art. But this was all nice stock that came in at the right money. I had the most amazing pair of large spelter, Victorian spelter figurines. They were gorgeous, they were. Um, so yeah, there's some really nice bits of stock ready for filming. So it's gonna be an interesting week. You gotta try and keep up on the videos, keep up on the work. And um, yeah, I'll keep you updated throughout the day anyway, guys. I'll do regular videos. It's raining, so thank God I'm going to an indoor car boot sale and then drive around, see what I can find. So, wish me luck, and I'll see you soon, guys. I know. Okay, guys, uh, but as you can see, it's uh, daytime now. <laughs> Um, I bought a few pieces in Splot, which when I park up now, I'll show you. I didn't have a lot. Splot was very busy this morning. Um, there wasn't a single sp space or pitch available. It's just nobody had anything that I actually wanted. Um, there was one dealer down there who had a set of silver cufflinks with the Jewish star on, and he wanted a tenner for them, and they were wafer thin. So I left them, but they were the only thing that appealed to what I like. I did have a couple of, um, in a sense, miner's lamps. Um, a modern bronze figure. Um, a Victorian drinking glass. And some turkey eggs. I have never ever tried a turkey egg. I've had duck eggs, chicken eggs, quail eggs, goose eggs. For the first time ever, I'm going to try a turkey egg. They were selling them down in Splot this morning. Uh, 50 pence an egg. So I bought two for supper. I'm going to try a turkey egg. Well, when I pull over, I'm going to show you the, um, the bits of stock. While down in Splot, I've obviously I've been chatting to everybody, all the dealers I know, asking them if they knew for any cheap shops. And, uh, there's a few dealers there who uh, had premises who've been giving me some advice. Um, one thing I've been told to be very careful of is make sure I do not rent a shop with a maintenance agreement. Um, one of the dealers down here apparently said if you have a, a rental agreement with a maintenance agreement then you're responsible for the maintenance on the upkeep of that property and if, let's say the, I'm going to say the roof goes, you've got to put a new roof on it, you're your thousands in the hole. Um, I'm not doing that, I'm paying rent. It's the owner of the um, premises to keep up the uh, maintenance. I'll speak to you in a minute now, guys. Right, um, 
I've just parked up in Ponty. I was driving through Ponty Village and I've just seen a little shop with a Ferenc sign. So I'm gonna go and take a little look now at that and I'll chuck that in um, as I look now, guys. So I wanna say hello to Sandra while she's here. She's on speakerphone. <laughs> well, Sandra's on speakerphone. She, uh, she was Hi the one who phoned. So. I can't be there today, but I'm, as you can see, I'm super duper excited on my these finding shops, and that's why I want to know everything. So poor bugger got me stuck on the phone at the moment with them. But I've got a slimming world today, guys, so wish me luck trying to lose a little bit of weight. But I can't wait for Edward to get a shop, and I'm super excited for him, and I can't wait to watch the video. Anyway, I'm going to go down and have a little look at this shop, guys, so come with me. Okay, so... Uh, ground floor shop to let Thomas March. Let's have a look by her. Well, that's a possibility. It's small. How small is that? It's a small storefront, but it might be alright. And where's that all outside? Outside Ponte, We're actually on, you know the one way system in Pont de Yeah. Heavy, heavy traffic. So that might be alright. Yeah. Is it with Thomas Marsh? Better get a photo of the uh, sign so I can get the number. Yeah, Alright, when do you want me to call you back? All right, first one. Anyway, guys, as you can see, it's quite a busy, busy interjunction by her with some off-road parking. So this might be a possibility. The shop is small. It is a small shop, but lots of heavy traffic. So I might be all right by there. Depends how much they want. It's a small shop. Ground floor shop to rent. I might be all right. The only downside with it is, I don't know how security is, that's quite flimsy glass. Downside on this one is the windows and doors. I don't know if I like them, but overall, I like the location. Okay guys, so, there's uh, one shop we've come across already. now. The shop is small and it hasn't got double glazing windows, which frightens me quite a bit. Um, however, it is on a seriously, seriously busy section of road here. So I'm going to phone and just ask out of curiosity how much it is. So I'm ringing the estate agent now. You've dialed an incorrect number. Please check the number. Okay, bear with me. Oh, two. Try that again, is it guys? Please note calls may be recorded for training for quality closing. Please press 1 for maintenance and 2 for any other letting inquiries. Thank you. Noted. As an independent family business, Hmm. Yes, good morning, love. Um, I was driving past um, in Broadway this morning in Pont de Prix and I noticed you have a sign on a shop uh, for to let there. Can you tell me how much they're asking, please? Yes, it is six thousand per annum. Six thousand per annum. Is that just the rental then, or is it come with maintenance agreements? What is it? Yeah, so that's that really is just the rental and um, the landlord will um, look after the building itself out, uh, outside the external repairs and the internal repairs would be for the tenant to, to look after. Right. Um, can you tell me, is it just the one front room or has it got other rooms down down there? And can you give me the size please love? Because there's blinds down there, is I can't really see much. Yeah, that, that'd be absolutely fine, love. He can probably discuss it with you a little bit further. I know we've had a couple of 
a few rings there, but I don't know if, that, if anyone's taking it. But I'll ask Tom to give you a call. It probably will be this afternoon. That's fine. out on a few appointments. And what was your name? My name's Walter O'Neill. And what's your telephone number, Mr O'Neill? 07913 That's great, Lev. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you. Uh, while you're on the phone, Lev, sorry, uh, can you tell me, uh, do you have any other properties around the five, six thousand a year uh, rental, you know, with mainstream traffic type things for a retail? We don't. Um, I mean, is it um, just that sort of area that you're looking at? I'm not really worried about the area. I'm more worried as long as it's got flowing traffic or foot traffic. I just want to put an antique shop up, I do. I see. Well, we're based actually out in, in Whitchurch in North Cardiff, so we haven't got a huge amount um, of commercial property up in the area. Also, um, nothing in the, the similar price bracket, unfortunately. Right. All right, then. I look forward to the phone call. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. So, there we have it. I'm going to be phoned back. Um, 6,000 a year works out at, I think it's about 120, 125 pound a week. Which is more than I've been quoted for a property in Newport. However, I don't know if you can actually see this, the sheer volume of traffic flowing past me now. You know, it is, this must, road must have 10, 20,000 cars um, a day go past it. So, the chances of passing trade is seriously high. So this is a potential. The shop is small. The actual thing I don't like about it is, is the security, because I want to put a lot of gold, silver, and high-end antiques. That is the downside to it, is the windows and doors. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But time to move on and see what else we can find. All right, guys, so I've just gone into Pontypridd Town Centre now and I'm in the NCB car park. So I'm just going to give you a little glimpse at some of the bits I've bought now this morning before I go off looking for the estate agents and things. First things first, turkey eggs. Two of those to try tonight. I quite like turkey anyway, so that's going to be a change, something different. I had this which looks like a miner's lamp. However, it's a bottle. For all intents purposes, it is a miner's lamp. The top half is, I think that's quite a novelty piece. Quite unusual, I've never seen one before. And he added up five pound. So, after a couple of reductions as well and then I had a really nice lost this pin but there I'll have to put a pin in that one uh, wooden miners lamp this one's a bit rough it's gonna need a bit of attention this one I think um, made of wood a little bit of movement there's a little bit of rough so maybe they need tightening up or I'll see what I can sort out with them but it was two quid guys you know, I quite like them. Then I had a modern bronze ballerina dancer, lady. It's quite nice. It's modern, but it is solid bronze. It was two pounds. And I've had a, say Victorian, it might even be early 20th century, um, drinking glass but it is nominal guys it's nothing special that ain't what can I say that is how poor the day has been guys very very poor that is the extent of my buying the lamps the single glass is neither here nor there I'm gonna put it with a job lot of other glasses um, the lamps okay I'll uh, do a bit of money on the lamps and the bronze I'll sell for about 10 or 15 pounds it's covered my fuel for the day but today is all about finding a shop. I'm going to go pay my parking now and then we're uh, off into town and 
I'll get whatever films footage I can, but I'm going to go into the estate agents, put my name down on some estate agents, but really I want to be paying about five or six thousand a year. I don't want to be paying over six, but preferably five thousand a year is about my limit, what I want to pay. Because then on top of that, you've got council rates, you've got water rates, you've got electric, you've got telephone, you've got everything. You know, you're still, even if you're at five thousand for the shop, you're talking another five or ten thousand for everything else. So you're talking fifteen thousand a year, ten to fifteen thousand a year to have a shop. You gotta have a lot of sales to pay a wage and make that at the same time off a shop. So it's really gotta pay. So we'll see. Fingers crossed. But you're gonna see it all on film anyway, guys. I'll film as much as I can. Just a little look of the town centre for you now, guys. There are shops for rent. Okay, so there's three or four so far in the town centre up for rent. Let's see. At least another one or two up there. We're in Darlow's Bay now, so I'm going to go in and have a look, see what they've actually got, if anything, commercial. Found one. Look at the size on that. I bet I couldn't afford the council rates on that. Okay, so I've just been through Ponte Preed, and there's about eight shops empty in Ponte. Um. Out of them eight, uh, three or four of them were what's known as pop-up shops, vapour shops and things like that, that are no longer there. But there's no boards for me to get an estate agent number and there's no signs or notes or anything in any of the windows with a phone number to phone to rent the shop. So the shops are empty, but I don't know what they're doing with them. There are three or four down there, but they look very big, very expensive, and certainly out of my price range. I'm looking for a smaller, you know, five, six thousand uh, pound per annum shop. So I'm going to make a couple of phone calls now. Um, bear with me. Uh, bear with me a second guys, let me get the number now, right, uh, right got you, right, here's an estate agent now I'm going to ring with this, see if I can get them. Phone number I want, lovely. Uh, where are you? Contact. Right then, guys. So, Here we go. No answer as of yet. Sorry, all staff are busy at the moment. Please leave your name and number. That didn't quite work. Um, apparently they are the main estate agent around by here that does the commercial lettings. 
So I'm going to carry on my search and when I phone them back later on I'll uh, I'll film that because I'm going to get myself put on a few lists, estate agent lists, so that as the properties come in they can just contact me and let me know. Now I've still got the ones in Cardiff that I, or Newport I want to do. Just trying to find someone a bit more local so that, you know, I can, uh, I don't have the commute in, the travelling, I'm closer to home if there's a problem with the children, and so on. And you can all understand that, you know, if there's a problem at the school, I have to go. So, we'll see. I'm going to carry on the search, see what we can find, but at the moment, it have not been brilliant. That one, mind, this morning, up on uh, Broadway... That's a possibility. That really is a possibility, so we'll see. I just don't like the security. If I spoke to them, if they change it to double glazing, I'd consider that one. But we'll see. Bear with me, and I'll be back, guys. When I got more of an update, you'll know. See you soon. Okay, we're gonna try again. Last chance, and then we're off. You'd think they'd want to answer the phone. You know, everybody who rings is a potential customer. Sorry, all the stuff are busy at the moment. Please. It makes sense to me. If you can't keep your phones manned, you're losing customers. Well, it happens. Anyway, we're gonna help me sell take this down so I can drive. Okie dokie guys, um, well, from talking to people down here, the biggest killer from what I can understand is um, council tax. That is the, um, the biggest uh, killer here, it is killing the shops. Now I don't understand why the council, the rates are so high that they are putting the shops out of business. The rates are actually greater than the income for most of the shops from what I'm understanding. Um, I just spoke to one shop now, and his rates were thousands, um, and I mean tens of thousands, for what? Just to have a shop in a town that's dead. You'd think, with all the internet sales and online stores now, that the councils would be thinking, well hang on, these towns are becoming ghost towns. Do you know, you go into any town and there's half a dozen shops empty. Um, Personally, I think the council should drop their rates, have some money in for the shops rather than having the shops empty because people cannot afford cannot afford to have the um, you know the rates. Now you get you know what I mean. What's the sense in having a shop empty because people can't pay you ten thousand pound for council rates or whatever it is? It's astronomical. Shocking to be totally honest with you, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of digging into the council rates So what I intend to do guys is One day this week. I'm gonna phone the council and I'm gonna make a video on How much it costs to have a shop and run a shop Now by that I mean the council rates and things we're already seeing how difficult it is to find a competitively priced shop in a half reasonable location um, and I don't want to go to the indoor market in Pont de Preet because it's dead again out of a hundred stalls I think only six or seven of them stalls are actually in use it's something stupid it is I walk through here and there is nobody in there whatsoever so there's another one for that barber recent she's actually oh that's under offer that's the store. That's the lady we just tried ringing now, the estate agent. They've actually got a shop right here in Pont de that's under offer. Hmm. Any others were there? It is very difficult, guys, trying to find the right place, I tell you. So. 
what can I say? Um, quite shockingly, it hasn't been brilliant so far. I have got a couple of possibilities, so we'll see how it goes. Trying them again once more while we're on the thing. again and some machine guys so what can I say <sighs> it's almost like banging your head against a brick wall but I, I'm not gonna give up I have got the ones that I can go to in Newport there's that one there in Broadway I quite like that one but they in Broadway I just don't like the fact there's no real security a single pane glass window an old wooden door and then I spend six thousand pound a year for that, mind. Well, shocking. What can I say to that? I don't know how you all manage with shops and things. If any of you have actually got a shop, I would, um, I'd certainly appreciate any advice you can give me on, you know, if there's anything you can claim for council rates for startup business, things like that, or you know small business rates that type of thing if there's anything you can help with like that i'd appreciate that guys um if anybody out there in and around pontypreth cardiff uh Caffili, aberdeen anywhere in that sort of area has a shop that you want to let give me a shout and at the moment i'm looking um now there's a couple in abacanan but i really don't want to go to abacanan been antique shops in Abercannon before and they failed. Now the next place I'd go from there would be, I wouldn't mind Mountain Ash because there was a successful uh, antique shop in there some years back. Um, I was talking to the estate agent and it was quite successful. The only reason it fell through was they ripped everybody off and done a runner. But this was some a long, long time ago. The shop's been empty for 10 years or something like that now. But it is a big shop, guys. I'll show you the shop when we get to Mount. Because I'm going to Mount to see if I can get a um, shop up there. There's a few empties in Aberdeen. So we'll see how Aberdeen goes. I don't want to go too far. You know, I can get a shop, believe it or not, for £70 a week. For a shop on a busy main road. Um, again in Newport But it's so far away. It's an hour away from me if it's a problem and That's what I don't like So we'll see how it goes now I'm gonna try Barbara Reese again now in a minute um, <laughs> I don't want to keep filming for you to have answer machines, but at the same time I know what the, the time I film it I, uh, That I phone and I'm not filming you guaranteed. I'll have a bloody answer it's it a mess anyway i'll speak to you soon guys okay guys so i've got this one here which was always an opportunity um it's right on the junction here in abacanan but I, i'm not keen on abacanan i don't know if it's going to be successful but the shop itself is really good you know it's quite it's quite a nice looking shop no, it's quite substantial in size. Goes all the way through there to another room. The actual shop itself would do me a treat. But I can already tell you, they're gonna be asking way too much money for this. I'm gonna give them a ring in a minute. It's faded out windows. You can't see through these windows. Let me see if I can just capture it. You can see there there's another room through there which is quite substantial again so we're gonna have a look at this one now see if we can find out how much this okay so I'm gonna phone about this one now let's uh, see how much they actually want for this shop in Abacan in mind
Yes, uh, good morning, love. I'm um, hoping you can help me. Um, I'm looking at um, a shop you got advertised in Abercannon, uh, right by the school. Was oh, right, on the, uh, yeah, the old library, is it? Yes, I was wondering yeah. if you could tell me how much you're looking for that, please. Yeah, I'll have a look for you now. I'll keep you a second. Thank you. Yeah, I'm looking for the is £9,500 a year. Well, okay. Um, that's more than I was expecting for Abercunnan, to be honest with you. Oh, right, okay. Um, that's, uh, not sure that works out too, but no, I'm not sure. That's pretty much not far off £200 a week for uh, for Abercunnan, it's quite a lot. Is it? Uh, You've also got rates payable on top of that. Yeah, that's what I mean, you're talking that's a lot of money yeah. for Abercunnan. Um, I mean, they may be open to offer, that's what we've been asked to quote. Uh, but the person who deals with it is on leave this week and he's not back until Monday. So right. I can't really ask. Right, well I'm actually looking for a little shop um, to do an antique shop I am. I, I was looking to be paying about 5000 a year. Uh, the only reason okay. I considered this one is because it's uh, very local to me. But to be yeah. honest with you, Abercannan, well, it's cheap. I can get a shop in Newport Town Cent uh, City Centre for less than that. Oh, right, okay. They're, um, they're only uh, five and six thousand for a little shop in Newport City Centre. For Abercannon, that seems quite a lot. Right. Um, I, do you I have any. You want... Oh, go on, sorry, go on. Oh, I was just going to say if you want the surveyor to give you a ring when he comes back next week, maybe he can give you an idea how low they'll drop. Um, yeah, you can take my details. They can phone me back, love, please, if I haven't yeah, found certainly. something by then. Okay. Um, but. You know, for Abercannon, they, you know, it's very little passing through traffic and things. I can't see them getting that for Abercannon. I really can't. Right, okay. You know, we're, we're in a village here, out of the way, not in um, a town. Yeah. Okay, well, it's certainly worth asking, you yeah. know, how much they will drop. Um, I think they always kind of uh, ask a bit more than they're expecting to get a lot of the time. Well, even if they wanted to do a short-term lease for a, you know, for a few months until they found someone with interest, I'd be considered yeah. to do that type thing. Okay. All right. Well, the gentleman's name is Owen, so I can get him to ring you when he's back. If in you office. could, please, yes. Certainly, yes. I could take your details. Then. Yeah, my name is Walter O'Neill. Yes. And my telephone number is 07913. Yes. 246436. 246436. That's lovely. I got that. I'll pass that to Owen as soon as he's back in the office. I take it you're um, a commercial agent, yes? We are, yes. Do you have any um, sort of shop fronts? Uh, I'm not really that worried on the area, more on foot traffic type thing, but I'm looking around five or six thousand a year. I could check. Well, if you so wouldn't you mind, please, love, I'd be grateful. Yes, okay. Do you want me to ring you if we've got anything? Um, or sort of put it on email, which would be preferred. I don't mind uh, a phone call, love. Um, if you've got anything there, I, I'm, as I say, I'm not that worried on um, location. I don't care which town is in or anything. I just want something around the right money that's... Yeah, around five or six thousand should be enough. Because then I got to pay rates, council, you know, council tax, yeah. water rates, electric, and everything else. For a little antique shop, it's just going to be too much. Then otherwise. All right. Yeah, that's fine. I'll have a look through, and, and if we do have anything, I'll give you a quick ring to that's, tell you what it is. That's brilliant. Love. Thank you very much right. for your help. That's all right. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank bye bye. You. Bye bye. Wow. Nine and a half thousand. Do you, know you can buy houses around here for twenty-five thousand? Some of the houses. Nine and a half thousand, and that's exactly why it's empty, guys. But you never know, I'll give them a ring back next week, or they can phone me back next week. Um, maybe we'll do a deal of five or six thousand, but I'm certainly not going to be paying nine and a half thousand plus rates, plus electric, plus water. <laughs> not a hope in hell, but we'll see. She was very nice, um, she was very nice, very polite, and we'll possibly willing to work with me so we'll see what happens so see you soon till the next one <coughs> just quickly guys because I'm getting a bit worried here halfway through looking for this shop and everybody's going on about the council rates I'm gonna just give the council a little ring and ask them how much the rates are for a little shop So let's see how we go. Oh, so this is 
cymuno siarad yn Gymraeg, gwathwch un nawr. Welcome to Ron McKinnon Taff. Our calls are recorded. Please press 1 for the automated payment service. For council tax discounts and information, go to www.rctcbc.gov.uk forward slash council tax and housing benefits. If holding for an advisor, please have your account number ready. This is an important message regarding election registration. If you have not responded to the recent election registration form that was sent to you, please follow the instructions on the form and respond using your preferred method as soon as possible. Thank you. If you are a full-time student, please apply for council tax exemptions at www.rctcbc.gov.uk forward slash students. I repeat, www.rctcbc.gov.uk forward slash students. Oh, here we go. this detail already um, in terms of obviously um, uh, what the real value should be. Right. Um, so I'm going to find it on a list and just try and do that detail for you because the mum is just giving me I have an old library in Avocan and it's not giving me anything really. Has it given you a price for it at all? Or what company was you was actually letting it or selling it? Um, they're letting it they are. Um, they were asking nine and a half thousand per annum. Who was, who was the company letting it? Oh Christ, hang on a second. I don't think I got a photo. I only got their phone number. Um bear with me a second. I'm gonna have a look for you now on my phone. Sorry about that guys. Um bloody camera died at a change of battery halfway through a phone call. Of all things to happen, eh? <laughs> Always the same. Right, now I've spoke to the council and now what they've said, um I need the R V value of the company or the business, the shop. If the RV value is less than 6,000, now that's not the rates that I pay, as in your annual rates, that is the um, rateable value. So if the rateable value is less than 6,000, I don't pay anything in rates whatsoever. If the RV is between 6 and 12,000, then I have reduced business rates for small business. And obviously, if it's over 12,000 rateable value, then I don't get no discount whatsoever, and the rates are what the rates are. Um, so, I'm going to phone this lady back now, who we've already spoke to, and it was this one, and I'm going to get the rateable value for the old library. Yes, hello again, love, I'm sorry, I, I spoke to you, um, you uh, uh, just recently about the old library in Abercannon. Yeah. Um, would you be able to give me the RV value, please? It's, it's already gone that way. Oh, the library, no, I'm not coming, sorry. I wasn't there. Right, the, the, R, the RV value. Yes, please, love. The rateable, uh, rateable, rateable value. Yes. Yeah? Right, the rateable value is 6,500. The rates payable are 3,243. That's brilliant, love. Thank you very much for your help. All right, thank you. Thank bye. you, bye-bye. They're crafty buggers, aren't they? They've literally valued it at £500 above the um, threshold so that you have to pay rates on there. But that's not bad. £3,000 a year rates. And if they dropped it down to five or even £6,000 for the rent, then I'd be paying eight to 9000 a year. Let's do the math on that a second. Um... So we're we talking, I've offered 5,000, no, I'm going to offer 5,000 for the premises. They probably won't take it, they'll come back at six. But 5,000 plus the 3,000 is obviously 8,000. Divide that by 52 weeks. Ouch. Oh, no, that's all in. I panicked then. So it cost me £155 a week for the rates and the shop. That's doable. I can do that because it is a nice shop and I don't mind the little spot but there. Um, it doesn't have the volume of traffic like it did in Pontypridd. However, what I will say is 
there is a lot of traffic for the villagers. That's a main route in and out of Abakan and Penrakaiba um, and so on around here. And I would obviously put out to all my friends in the trade that I've got a shop in Abakanan. So that's potential. Questionable. Very curious and interested. Nine grand a year is doable all in. But we'll see what else we can find. I got the man who the surveyor isn't back till the um, Monday. Um, so we'll see what else we can find by them. But if he gets back to me by Monday, then I'll ask them, plain and simple, take an offer of 5,000. Or it'll remain empty. It's that simple. Um, I can't see anyone else taking it on. So we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed. Let's see what else I find today now. Um, I'm going to pick Sandra up. She's going to come with me on the second half of the journey now. So you'll see her in um, the, the video soon. She's due back now from Slimming World. Uh, all I can say is I'm sorry the phone died um, whilst filming. Phone died. Camera died whilst filming. Um, but I'm going to add it all on anyway I was going to make a separate film looking at the council tax and things like that but now I know how it works up to 6,000 is free 6 to 12 is reduced as you're talking about 3 grand and then over that then you're talking stupid stupid money you know 6, 7, 10, 12, 15 whatever it is thousands and it's enough to put people out of business so it must be valued on location because the size of the shop there is a very good sized shop. But the location is shit. Whereas shops in Ponty had a higher RV but a smaller shop. So it's got to be based on location as well. And foot traffic. So we'll see what happens. But I may give that one a go guys. But we'll see what we can find now up in Mount and everywhere else. So. All we can do is fight on. It's going to be a long day and we'll keep fighting guys. Morning love. Um, hoping you can help me. I'm uh, I'm after a small shop I am. Um, not particularly worried where. Um, more more worried on price and things like that. I'm looking for a cheap shop just to open up an antique, small antique shop. Right. I'm wondering if you've got anything at all. You know, five, six thousand ish. Um, can I take your name and number then and get the um, lettings? the manager that's the order that to call you back because I don't know and they're not in at the moment. Yeah, so if you could, love. My phone number... 07913 That's correct, yes. My name and is Walter O'Neill. Hmm? Walter O'Neill. I can't hear you. The line's really bad. Sorry, love. Walter O'Neill. Walter O'Neill. I'm looking for something small. I am just opening a little oh, antique shop. Yeah, about five or six thousand. There's something like that, love. antique shop, yeah? Yeah. Okay, I will tell um, the owner when she gets back and get her to give you a call. Thank you very much. Thank you for your call. Thank you, bye-bye. Thanks, bye. That was the Barbara Reese one. I finally managed to get through to them. So they may phone me back now today and see what happened there. Let's see. We can keep trying, guys. Okay, guys, so... I'm on the government uh, estimate your business rates on the government website. Now, for England and Wales, um, it says use the table to work out which multiplier you use. There's two multipliers. You have a standard multiplier and you have a small business multiplier. So, for 2017 to 2018, the standard multiplier is 47.9 pence, whereas the small business multiplier is 46.6 pence. So, you're saving all of 1.3 pence at the moment. So, for example, Barbara has a business in England. The rateable value of her business is 10,000. So, she uses the 2017 thousand. 2017 to 2018 small business multiplier of 46.6 pence to estimate their business. The calculations as follows: 10,000 rateable value multiplied by 
pence. Or 46.6 pence, equaling £4,666 basic business rate. However, as her rateable value is less than 15000 she may be able to reduce her bill to nothing by applying for small business rate relief. So, we now know that... We know that one is 3000 anyway. Oh, th just over 3000 because it was 6500 money. So, we're working on that calculator in a minute. All right, so it was 6500 which was 6500 multiplied by 46.6... No, six five zero zero multiplied by point four six six, which is how I done the calculation. Equals that can't be right. Start that again. Six thousand five hundred multiplied by no point. Right. So that is the exact business uh, rates on the library down there was £3,029. Divide that by 52 out of curiosity. 60 quid a week. Right. Okay. It's not the end of the world. But I can then apply for small business relief because, and it is only £500 in the bloody bracket where I got to pay. So, the likelihood is they would actually actually accept the small business relief and exempt me from the business rates. So the likelihood is I don't pay council tax, or if I do, it's going to be a nominal fee. But £3,000 isn't that bad. Um, I take the library down there, to be honest, they're in that location for five, with the 3000 rate, so it's £8,000 in total. i do that. Or if I could get there, uh, because it's only 500 above the 6000 if I could get it exempt, then I'd just be paying the £5,000 for the shop, bring it down to about £100 a week, which would be absolutely perfect, all in, no fuel, no travelling, it's 30 seconds down the road from my house, and I'd have a little shop. I may make an offer, we'll see. <laughs> Look who decided to join us, guys. <laughs> I've been slimming world, I've just eaten toast, I just moaning and I had toast in my mouth. I lost two pounds, guys. Over the moon. So, anyway. First of all, big congratulations to Sandra for losing two pounds. Thank you. Well done. Right, now we're on to business. I've just told... Now what's my business? <laughs> my business. <laughs> <laughs> I've just told Sandra now all about the, uh, the li old library in Abakanan and our conversation where I felt it was overpriced. I've actually filmed it. <laughs> I actually agree that it's overpriced. Um, we're now off. We're going to look in Mountain Ash. There was um, a pop-up shop down there that done the fireworks um, last year and it's still empty. But Sandra's managed to find out who owns that shop and message them. But they've come back and said it's not for rent. So we're going to go now. We're going to park up in Mount. Have a little look through Mount Town. Do the charity shops as I have been. I've done all charity shops this morning in Cardiff and um, Ponty. Not that I've had anything yet, guys. It's been the worst charity shop run ever, but I think my mind it'll, is preoccupied. It'll pick up now, he's for me. He'll come out now with an absolute belt, there you watch. Yeah, it's because my mind's preoccupied, it is. I'm too busy looking for shops and that, and I'm not concentrating on what I'm doing. So, I know. I tried filming the conversation with the RCT council, but um, the battery it bloody is. died halfway through. So we had to change the battery over. So we're off the mount. Uh, guess what's in mount, guys? Go on, take a wild guess. I'm gonna leave a 10 second break. Craig's. <gasps> you ruined it. Oh, I, well, want, I was just guessing. I wanted I my wanted guess. No, I wanted him to put it on the bottom of the video while I was in in mount for me on treat day, and you ruined it. Craig's. It is Craig's. <laughs> However. She'll still be having a treat. Hey, bad. We took some toast. Back on filming a bit. Like that. With a cake. Do you doubt it for a second, guys? Not at all. <laughs> anyway, as I said, Happy's in the video now, so we'll see you soon when we got an update. Have an update on my cake. Bye. This building here, guys, 
is the old antique shop from Mountain Ash. You can see the size on this building. It's massive. I tell you what, I'd love to get my hands on this. As you can see there on the end there, trading post antiques. But there's no boards. This has been shut for us since I've been here, so a long, long time. There's no boards, there's nothing. What there is, is a phone number there from the previous tenant. I wonder if they'd have the number of the whoever owned it. Okay guys, so I'm back home now and I've spoken to the estate agents and what I've asked them to do is email me the details for Abercannon. Now I'm preparing a letter. Here we go is the letter and I'm going to read it to you now. Thank you very much for sending me the details of the old library in Abercannon. I have spoken to some of your staff today regarding the property. I feel it is a very good property and would suit my needs very well. The location, however, is far from perfect. Abercannon is a very small village with nothing more than a handful of old shops and limited passing traffic. I would be willing to put an offer in for the property, but my offer would be £100 a week for the first three to six months on a three to six month contract to be reviewed slash negotiated closer towards the asking price after the six month trial period providing I can make the shop work. I would be willing to pay the full £1,200 up front for the three month contract or pay the £1,000 deposit and £100 a week with a deposit to be returned at the end of the six month contract. Um, I'm considering a number of shops so would appreciate your answer ASAP. Thank you. Kind regards, Walter O'Neill. Now, Abercannon isn't the perfect location and I've admitted that to them and to me. It is good enough for the antique shop, hopefully, as in there isn't another one around and I'm hoping I can sell a lot of jewellery. So, basically, um, what I'm saying to them is, I'll give you £100 a week on a trial period for either three or six months. We'll either make it work or we'll walk away. If we make it work and I make the money, then if it's paying, I'll pay the money they want. If it's not paying, then I'm simply not going to pay it and we'll negotiate and I'll stay either at the £100 or I'll leave the premises. But what we have spoke about when it is this one is actually big enough to actually put 10 or 20 cabinets in as well. I've been down to have a look at it, guys. It looks really nice. There's a large, large sales area. I could actually put cabinets in the one side and rent them out and have the other side for myself. So if they take £100 a week for six months on the tester, we may be in with a shout here. Foot through the door, one tour at a time. Let's see. You never know. With a bit of luck, they'll get back to me. Fingers crossed. Other than that, we're not really looking at any more shops today. So I'll I busted a gut to go and look out one, see him trying a lock set. Right. I, go I was going to go and finish off the video today, but tell you what we can do. We can go and look at the one in Unsporth Mini now. I just want to look at it. So and I'll give you a little look at that. Okay, guys, so see you soon. Bye. Well, guys, we went over there and it wasn't even worth stopping. It was, it was on the mountain. Was that big? It was tiny and it was on the mountain. It was crap. So the way to go is obviously we try and push him for the library. If I can get the library, then it'll be a couple of cabinets in the back of it to try and cover the rent. And I'll uh, start building up the antique centre from there. I might get 10, 20, 30 cabinets in the back room. Hey guys, never mind about him, right? He's on about a shop, right? I'm already thinking, who? what am I going to wear? White blouse, little black skirt, my uh, desk. He can just come and visit. <sighs> Love teasing him. Anyway, I'm thinking... Ah, ah. No, I don't care about him. I went into a, I went into a shop down there, and somebody called me princess and told me I have a beautiful smile. Any, I, I was like a swimmer I was. Anyway, <laughs> the plan is if I can get between ten and thirty cabinets in that back room because they're only two foot square and six foot tall. Um, and to be honest, it was quite a large room. The second room is just as large as the front room, so I might get thirty cabinets in it, even more. And a ten pound a cabinet, um, that's three hundred pound. Now I spoke to a lot of dealers this morning when I went around the market, telling them I was going to go for a shop, and they were all asking me for a cabinet. So I'm pretty confident I can get rid of between ten and thirty cabinets straight away, which should be the money back. But if I, they don't get sales, they're not going to stay with me, obviously. No. So we're hopeful, but this could be the first step to me getting a larger antique centre. Um. And you never know if this one's actually paying, then I may keep this one running and open another one.
You never know, innit? You can man one. I'm allowed to talk now. <laughs> I was telling you about being told that I was beautiful and being called a princess. But yeah, I'll man one. Edward can man Walter can man the other one. The street, believe it or not, right? It's called Walter Street. What's the chance is that? I went, it's named after you. I think we're going to get the shop. Look at me, we. This video is not going live, guys. No, um, until after we're in the shop and you see me Until after I know whether I've got the shop or not for the plain and simple reason. The last time i done something like this, I was buying an old vicarage, a house to live in. And I was chatting to some friends down the pub and a week before I was due to complete, I'd already sold my house. I was gazumped and lost the um, vicarage. So this isn't going public until after I've got a shop. This is just showing you the hardship of finding a shop at the right price. Yes. And it hasn't been an easy day. Honest to God, my head is banging. I'm knackered. I've been on a go since five this morning and it's now three o'clock in the afternoon. I've spoken to about 50 estate agents today. <laughs> um, and to be honest with you, I think the one that was best for me was on the doorstep all along. Yeah. But we'll see how it goes. I'm really hoping they accept my offer, guys, of £100 on a trial period and then possibly negotiate the rest. Because I do feel I can get all the rent and more once I'm established. And if they'll give it to me for the £100 until I'm established, then I think we're laughing. Mm hmm. Anyway, guys, we're going to leave it there. Um, guys, hopefully, by the time you, you watch us, I'll have the shop. What do you think about me getting called beautiful and called a princess? What do you think, guys? I was chuffed. He said, oh, you have a beautiful smile. Was it? Mm -hmm. Not sure, be I now. Made my day. I go on and carry on now. Sure, no? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. If you have, I would really appreciate a like and a share. Um... You'll find me on Facebook. I have a page on the group, Antiques Arena. You'll find me on eBay. Run a search for Antiques Arena Clearance. Hopefully you'll find me soon at the old library in Abercunnan. Which would be brilliant. <laughs> Which would be brilliant. And I have my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. And he's on Facebook and he's on Instagram. But if you remember, he can't work Instagram because you haven't got a clue. Bless him, he's starting to get on a bit. But I'm also on Instagram and I'm also on Facebook. So if you want to follow me, guys, feel free. I'll add you. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. <laughs> Bye for now. Okay, guys. So, you've just seen all the footage of the hunting for the shop. Hopefully, you enjoyed having a look at that. And just shows you how hard it is. But there are shops out there. Newport City Centre, £100 a week. pont de you know, up on Broadway, £100 a week. There are shops out there, guys. The shop rental isn't what you've got to worry about. The first thing you need to ask them is what is the rateable value of that premises? Because the rateable value, it will depend on how much rates you pay. Now I have given you the calculation I think in one of them videos. It was um, for a small business, it was 0 0.466, something like that. So 46 and a half pence. And what that means is, if the rateable value is 10,000, you divide it by 4, 0 0.466, which will be 4,666. And that's how you work it out. And if you're not a small business, you pay the full rate, which is pretty much 50p, half, half the rateable value of the property. You can apply for small business uh, discount. And quite shockingly, I thought, well, all right, the properties in Aberdeen, they were rateable value of just under 12,000. So they were coming in at 6,000 council rates on top of the rent. And I phoned the council. I said, do you do startup programs, uh, you know, introductions give businesses a bit of time to get going nope no free period anymore with council tax okay do you do discounts for a small business yes we do what's the rateable value so I give her the rateable value of the shop she said right small business discount on this is 250 pound they knock a whole 250 pound off genuinely guys they've got to be 10 to 15 shops empty in Aberdeen town centre now one, that's 10 or 15 shops the council and again council rates on. I walked around the corner and there's a poor man shut in shop. Um, I was sent around because I was trying to buy cabinets. There's a poor man shut in shop in Aberdeen who's worked for years up in a little village in Abercombe Boy uh, to build his business up. He moved to Aberdeen and the council rates killed him and he's, he's shutting down, he's out of business. 
Where is the sense in these councils putting you know little businesses out of business? Pure greed. That's all it is, guys. I'm all for everybody paying their way. We have to pay our council tax, and that's fine. But you know what? Do it right. You've got 10 or 15 shops empty there. You've got shops closing down every day because they can't afford the council rates. Do an introductory rate. Value the business, guys, not just the premises. You know, let small businesses get in and grow. Honest to God, whoever's doing these council taxes, they're so short-sighted, it is unbelievable. Now, if they'd said to me, right, we'll give you one year free and then we'll value your business at the end of the year on your take-ins and then we'll do your um, council tax on the take-ins, I wouldn't be scared to go up there and gamble and I'd build my business up and eventually they'd be having more money than they, they're asking now. But I wouldn't have a gamble because I'd have all the units, I'd have them all rented out. They're so short-sighted, it's unbelievable. The council are, that's the price you pay or piss off. Really guys, it's not the way to be. Small businesses are trying to set up every day. You wouldn't believe how hard it's been for me to set up. It really wouldn't. It's been really hard. I've had a lot of support, thank God. Um, but it has not been an easy task. But the biggest obstacle is council tax, guys. Check any premises you're going for for council tax. And guys, you'll see in the video, um, I went for one little um, shop in a village. And they wanted 10000 a year for the rates, uh, not the rates, the rent. That's without the council tax rates. And um, we're talking a dead end village now with maybe five or 10,000 people living in it. We're very, you know, all right, they'll be passing trade and I have very little. And I thought, all right, well, I'll drag the people to me with advertising and things like that. And you know, they wouldn't come down from the 10,000. That shop's still empty. And I tell you what, this time next year, I'm gonna do a vlog and I bet that shop's still empty. I'll do, a, I'll do an annual vlog, tell you how the shop has done over the year. I'm not going to tell you my profits, obviously. But I'm going to tell you whether it was worth me doing or not. And whether it'd be worth you looking at something similar. Now, I'm very fortunate. I've gone to a little village, or town rather, that hasn't got a, hasn't got a jewellery shop. He used to have a Gus Jones, but they shut down some five or ten years ago. It hasn't got an antique shop for miles around. The closest jewellery shop will be Aberdeen now, or Pontypreeth. And I'm smack bang in the middle of the two. <clears throat> so I got all that circumference where people can come to me. I'm in time for the Black Friday sales. I'm in time for the Christmas trade, guys. I seriously, I can't wait to get in there. I'm having the keys on Monday. Um, you're not going to have a video in the next week on the shop because I'm not, I'm not going to show you the shop in its current state until I show you it finished. So I'll film the shop as I'm doing it and there'll be a step-by-step -step video and that'll probably be a two-hour film or an hour-long film where I show you the, fil uh, the shop as it is, as it goes in. Then I'll show you it all coming together, putting the signs up, doing any repairs to the shop because it needs a couple of repairs, putting in my units, laying it out and then putting the stock in and then you'll have a final view pan of the entire premises. Super excited, guys. Hope you like seeing the video and hope you're looking forward to seeing the next one when I show you the shop. I'll see you soon guys, the videos will be back to normal tomorrow and you'll see the shop one now in about 10 days. Wish me luck, I'm going to need it. Bye for now guys. You'll find me on uh, Facebook, Antiques Arena, I have a page and a group. You'll find me on eBay, just run a search by seller, Antiques Arena Clearance. And I have my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. And as of next week, you'll find me at number 78. Commercial Street, Mountain Ash. Bye for now, guys.